Well, good morning, boys and girls. I'm really glad to be in your school today. I've got a fantastic story for you today from the Bible. I've got a story for you today about a king called King Darius. Now, King Darius was king of a country called Babylon. Now, at that time, Babylon was the biggest and the most important country in the entire world, which made King Darius the biggest and the most important king in the entire world as well. And so one day, King Darius was sitting on his throne and he was thinking, well, I'm in charge of a rather big and important country, aren't I? Maybe it would be a good idea if I had someone to help me to run the country. So he decided that he was going to form a government. And if he was going to form a government, then he was going to need a prime minister. But who should he choose? Who would be the best person for the job? And he thought, well, there are two people. They've lived in Babylon all of their lives. They've worked for me all of their lives. They're really, really ambitious. They would do absolutely anything to be prime minister. But he thought, but is there anyone else? He thought, well, what about Daniel? Now you see, Daniel was different. Because you see, Daniel wasn't actually from Babylon. Daniel had been brought to Babylon when he was a very young child. He was actually from a country called Israel. But Daniel had also worked for the king all of his life. And the king knew some, that there was something really, really special about Daniel. Because you see, Daniel was a father of God. And so because of that, the king knew that Daniel was very, very so the king sat and he thought and he wondered, who should I choose? Who would be the best person to be my prime minister? And the king decided that he was going to choose Daniel. Well, the other two men weren't pleased at all. They started going around saying things like, who does the king think he is choosing Daniel? Daniel's not even from Babylon. He's from another country. The men were really, really jealous. In fact, they were so, so jealous, they decided to try and get Daniel into trouble even though Daniel had never done anything wrong. Now we know, don't we, that we should never, ever do that. We should never, ever try to get people into trouble when we know that they haven't done anything wrong. But that's what the two men decided to do. So they got some spies to follow Daniel for an entire week and see if they could catch Daniel doing something that was wrong. And the spies came back to report back to the two men. And they said, we've got some good news for you. Yes, said the men. We've been following Daniel all week. Yes. And we've discovered that each and every day he tells someone all the secrets of the country of Babylon. Oh, wow, said the two men, this is the most incredible, fantastic news. Have you seen this person that Daniel speaks to? Well, no, we haven't, they said. But we do know his name. Daniel calls him God. Oh, no, said the two men. Daniel's not doing anything wrong. Daniel's just praying. And there's nothing wrong with praying. <coughs> or is there, they thought. The two men went back before the king. And they said, oh king, oh mighty king, oh wonderful king, oh glorious king. Because that's how you used to speak to kings back in those days. They said, king, we've been thinking. And we think that you are a rather big and important king. King Darius said, thought, well, I guess I'm a rather big and important king. And they said, king, because we think that you're such a big and such an important king, we think that you should pass a law that says that no one can pray to anyone except for you. And the king sat there and he thought, well, I guess that would be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? So that's what he did. He got out a piece of paper and he wrote out the law saying that no one could pray to anyone except for him. And then he did something very strange at the bottom. He took a bit of wax, he put it on the bottom of the letter, and then he sealed it with his very special ring, which meant no one could change the law, not even the king himself. The next day, the two men went and they followed Daniel and they waited until he went home and he started. Now, we don't know exactly what the two men said, but I think it might have gone something like this. Oh, who's that in there, then? Is that our new Prime Minister, Daniel? Oh, and what's he doing? Is he praying? Is he breaking the King's brand new law on the very first day that it's been passed? Do you think we should tell the King? Oh, well, oh, yeah, I think we should. And so that's just what they did. The two men rushed back before the King as fast as they possibly could. And they said, oh, King, oh, mighty King, oh, wonderful King, oh, glorious King. Because that's how you used to speak to King. They said, King, we've got some bad news for you. Oh no, said the King, what is it? Well, King, they said, we've found that someone is breaking your brand new law on the very first day that it's been passed. Oh no, said the King, that's no good. Who is it? They said, well, King, we've got some really, really bad news for you. It's actually your new Prime Minister, Daniel. The King realised that the men had only got him to pass the law so that they could trick him and get Daniel into trouble. But remember, the king had sealed the law with his very special ring, which meant no one could change the law, not even the king himself. And so Daniel had to be punished. 
And the punishment was that Daniel had to be thrown into the lion's den. And the king watched as he saw Daniel starting to fall and the lion starting to pounce. And then, bang, the roof of the lion's den was slammed shut. That night, King Darius went to bed. And he closed his eyes and he started to sleep. And he started to dream. But they weren't very nice dreams at all. In fact, they may even have been nightmares. Because the only thing that the king could see every time he closed his eyes was Daniel falling, the lions pouncing, <coughs> Daniel falling, the lions pouncing. The king didn't know what to do at all. He kept waking up in a big sweat. But every time he closed his eyes, that was all he could see was Daniel falling and the lions pouncing, Daniel falling. The king didn't know what to do at all. As soon as the sun rose the next morning, he raced out to the lion's den as fast as he possibly could. He banged on the top of the den. And he cried out, Daniel, servant of the Most High God, are you there? A small voice came back. King Darius, is that you? Is that you, Daniel? How are you still alive? I saw you falling last night and I saw the lions starting to pounce. <coughs> well, King, said Daniel, you see, my God knew that I hadn't done anything. Else. And so because of that, in the middle of the night, he sent some angels to close the mouths of the lions to make sure that I would be safe and I would be protected. And it was all because God loved Daniel. And you know, the same God that loved Daniel and protected Daniel actually loves us as well. And showed us just how much he loves us. Because you see, it's the same God that came down from heaven to earth as Jesus. As a little baby that grew up and eventually went to die on the cross to show us just how much he loved us. Because the Bible says that as he died on the cross, he actually took the punishment for all the things that we've done that are wrong. So that we can be forgiven and be his friend and one day get to heaven and be with him. Well, the king ordered that the roof of the lion's den be opened up and that Daniel be brought out. Then he called for the two men to be brought before him. And he said, oh, thank you so, so much for showing me that there are people in my government that I can't trust. Uh, that's all right, king, they said. We're glad to show you that Daniel couldn't be trusted. Oh, I don't mean Daniel, said the king. Um, uh, what do you mean then, said the men? Well, the king said, well, Daniel's all right. You see, Daniel's God knew that he'd done nothing wrong. And so he sent some angels in the middle of the night to close the mouths of the lions to make sure that he would be okay. The men are starting to get a bit nervous now. Um, well, uh, uh, king, uh, who do you mean then? And the king said, well, I realised that you two couldn't be trusted. That you just got me to pass the law just to get Daniel into trouble because you were so, so jealous. And so the king decided that because the lions hadn't had anything to eat all night long, he was going to give them a nice big breakfast. And that's the story about Daniel and the lion's den. But the most important thing for us to remember is that just like God loved Daniel, so God loves each and every one of us. And that's why he sent Jesus to come and die on the cross. Well, I've got to say you listen ever so well this morning. And I just want to end this by a with a comment. So we're just quite good. Put our hands together. Close our hands. I'm going to say a prayer. I'm going to say amen at the end. And I'd appreciate it. God, I thank you so, so much for the wonderful stories in your Bible. God, I thank you for the story about Daniel and the lion's den and about how you loved Daniel so much that you protected him. And God, I thank you that you love us so much as well that you sent Jesus to come and die on the cross for each and every one of us. But God, I pray that as we go through our day in school today, you help us not to be like the two men in the story, trying to get people into trouble and doing things that are wrong. But instead, you help us to do what we know is right and good. 